Hello friends, uh, let's continue with our discussions about some quick tips related with flowers of plants belonging to family Fabaceae. Uh, last time we discussed few details about the vexillary estivation it has and simultaneously I told you about uh, gamosepalus and polypetalus, polypetalus condition found in and even we discussed about, uh, even I told you about uh, how a floral formula interprets the zygomorphic form then uh, calyx as well as corolla. So let's continue uh, that discussion once again and uh, I'll just have a small recap first and then I'll continue this discussion which we are going to cover diadelphy and uh, 9 plus 1 arrangement of stamens in flowers of family Fabaceae. So let's go. Well, so This is a uh, pigeon pea flower. Uh, these are very small flowers, hardly uh, up to 7 to 8 millimeters or 1 centimeter. Or, uh, sometimes even when they are uh, fully uh, enlarged and that time that goes to be something more than 1 centimeter, but they are extremely small. What you see here is the hexillum. or it is also called standard. The second pair of petals that is found in these flowers is wings and the third place where they are fused that is a shaped structure and that is known as keel. They are uh, this keel is produced by fusion of two petals, partial fusion of two petals, while wings are placed aside. And you can see all these petals are free from each other and that is why we call this condition as uh, poly petalus. Habesi uh, belongs to super family leguminosae or leguminosae. These are pod bearing plants and their fruit is in the form of legume or pods and that is why the super family is leguminosae family or leguminosae family. Uh, then uh, you can note one interesting thing here, even after the pod formation here, there you can see some relic, some remnant part or some uh, persistent part of withered flower and this is ovary that is enlarged into uh, this fruit here that we are going to cover in the next lecture. But for today, let's understand one thing that there is a large petal called vexillum. Then the second pair of petals that is found, that is uh, this wings or ala, and the third one that is in the form of a structure called keel. Fine. So uh, let's do one thing. Uh, let's go to one more visual here, uh, somewhat closer view. And this time, uh, look at this part here. This is the vexillum, the largest outer petal. Then these two are wings. And here is keel that is formed by partial union or partial fusion of innermost petals. And uh, that is in the form of uh, this boat-shaped structure called keel. All right. 
uh, sepals are fused here and that can very precisely note in this uh, bud here and uh, this is how the Fabaceae flower looks like. There are five sepals which are fused and that is why it is camo sepalous condition. There are five petals which are free and that is why it is called poly petalous condition. And when we write uh, this uh, floral formula here, then at that time we write it something like this, that the flower is having uh, bilateral symmetry, so it is zygomorphic. Symbolically, we write that uh, by using this sign. And uh, there are five sepals, K5, corolla is Either you can write this five or uh, you can write it more precisely and that is one plus two plus one vexillum, two wings and petals fused form keel. So, uh, this time I have taken the visual of pigeon pea. In the last video, uh, you had seen the visual of uh, chickpea plant and uh, this is pigeon pea. In Marathi we call this as tur dal and uh, in uh, tur and in <coughs> last lecture I had shown you uh, the chickpea and that is harbara. Alright, harbara in Marathi or chana in Hindi. This is tuar uh, in Hindi or in Marathi. Alright, so, after uh, having this small recap, let's uh, go the next part now. So, here is <coughs> how this uh, stamens of uh, this plant or Fabaceae flowers, they look like. There are 10 stamens. <coughs> I'll take you to one important concept here. I'll explain you that first and then we shall continue with the rest of the details. Alright? So, let's go to this uh, diagram and uh, see here is uh, a flower and this flower is having five petals. If any flower has members of its floral whorls, means either sepals or petals or stamens or carpels, if they are in multiple of five, then it is called Pentamerous flower. Pentamerous flower. See, as a part of example, uh, you can see this flower. You should have seen this flower that is uh, hibiscus flower. And you can note that this flower is having uh, five petals which are uh, showing a twisted arrangement. We call that as twisted as division. And that is the characteristic feature of family Malvesi. And uh, one more thing you can note here at the top that there are one, two, three, four, five stigma means there are five carpels which are partially fused here. So, <clears throat> if any plant is having floral members of floral opals in multiple of five or five, then <clears throat> that is called a pentamerous flower. Uh, so, Fabaceae flowers are pentamers. They are having five sepals, they are having five petals. And now, if we come to this uh, part here, uh, that is uh, the stamens or androsium, then you can note that this androsium here, or these stamens, they are having total 
10 uh, that number is 10 uh, there are 10 stamens found have a sea flower this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and 10 they are in multiple of flower five and hence flower is pentamerous what if a flower is having four sepals four petals four stamens or eight stamens uh, four carpels then uh, if the members of floral whorls are in multiple of four then such flowers are called tetramerous yes tetramerous flowers so presence of either tetramerous or pentamerous flowers that is characteristic free feature of dicot angiosperms dicot angiosperms are those flowering plants in which the seed has two cotyledons and hence we call them as dicot plants if the seed is having a single cotyledon as we find that in maize or jawar or wheat then uh, you can say that uh, it is monocotyledonous plant or monocot and monocot plants are typically having trimerous flowers means members of floral whorl they are in multiple of three so that is characteristic feature of uh, yes monocot angiosperms all right so let's go to details of stamens now and uh, here uh, let's use this uh, diagram or this 3d visual and uh, you can see that here is uh, thalamus and on this thalamus this androsium is placed there are 10 stamens they are in multiple of five so this is pentamerous and what you will note here now is they show uh, two groups here one of these groups is having nine stamens while the second one is a single stamen in second group. this is typically something we call as nine plus one arrangement so let us try to understand this in somewhat more details and uh, kindly pay attention see every stamen has two parts stamen is the single member of androsium entire whorl is called androsium and its single member is called stamen stamen has two parts those are uh, filament and the top part of it is anther filament and anther filament and anther okay fine so this anther that is the topmost part of this flower see I'll take a let's take a very closer view of that and uh, now you can see that well here is uh, anther and you can see that this anther is having two lobes such anthers are are called dithecus anthers if the anther is having two such lobes anther lobes then it's called dithecus and if there is a single anther lobe then that is known as monothecus but in fabaceae flower we see dithecus anthers at the top of the filaments so 
each stamen is having a long filament that lifts the anthers to a fairly good height. And uh, this is the region where pollen grains are produced in any flower. Anther is that part of androsium that produces pollen grains. Okay, uh, fine. Uh, so, let's go to uh, one more detail of it. See, if you have carefully seen this flower, then you can note that in this flower, uh, all anthers are free from each other, while their filaments are fused. When anthers are free, and filaments are fused, it is called, yes, it is known as Adelphi. Adelphi. And if uh, they form two such bunches, then that is called Die Adelphi. Fabaceae flowers show Die Adelphi. So, are there any other examples of Adelphi? Yes, there are. So, let's go one of such examples now. See, uh, we are coming to this uh, diagram once again, and let's go to this hibiscus flower or this flower is a China rose flower. You can see that there is a long tube. This is called staminal tube because it is formed by fusion of many filaments here. And their anthers are free here. These are anthers. They are having, each of them is having a single lobe. And that is why that is known as monothecus anther here in this case. And there is a single structure or single structure formed by fusion of many filaments. And that is why this is called monoadelphy. Monoadelphy is featured in plants of family Malvesi and uh, China rose or hibiscus rosa sinensis is example of uh, this uh, Malvesi, typical example of Malvesi family. And this is a dicot family, uh, okra, uh, that also belongs to this bindi. And uh, there are many examples uh, of this uh, Malvesi flowers. Here you can see that all of them, they are having a long staminal tube and filaments are fused to form a single structure while anthers are free. Okay, so let's come back to this uh, diadelphy here. Yes. Here is diadelphy and you can note that this, uh, this anther is having uh, such a structure. The, sorry, this uh, androsium is having such a structure found in typically uh, the plants of flowers of family Fabaceae. Fabaceae flowers, they have 9 plus 1 arrangement. They are having such uh, 9 plus 1 arrangement. Uh, wait a moment. Yes. This is 1 and this is 9. So, while writing the floral formula, we will now write this something as C. Sorry, uh, first of all, we will take the symmetry, zygomorphic flower. Then, this is, this is calyx 
K and uh, it has it is symbolically represented as K. There are five sepals. Then comes corolla. Uh, it shows one vexillum, two wings and two petals. They form keel. And then comes androsium and we write that as 9 plus 1. You can write that as a 10 or more perfectly, you can write it as 9 plus 1, a 9 plus 1. That is diadelphy and having uh, filaments fused while anthers free, that is called adelphy. And there are two such uh, structures here and that is why it is called diadelphy. So, is there any other example uh, that shows more than such two arrangements or two bunches? Yes, now let's go to that. See, here is uh, that example and here is, uh, here are stamens of family Urutaceae and uh, all citrus plants, they belong to this family. Uh, lemon, lime, and oranges, etc. So, let's go to its details. Uh, yes, okay. So, here is that example. You can see. This is how the androsium of uh, root AC family looks like. See? This is how it looks like. Yes. Let's go to one more uh, important aspect here and see that I'll explain you here. Okay. Uh, wait a moment. Okay. Here is. Uh, One bunch formed by fused filaments. Uh, this is having bunches formed by fusion of filaments only, and anthers are free from each other. So this is example of Adelphi and. There are many such bunches and that is why this is polyadelphy. Polyadelphy is the condition in which uh, plants are, uh, these flowers are having uh, more than two such bunches formed by fusion of filaments. That is called polyadelphy. All right. So that is found in root AC family or all citrus flowers, all types of citrus uh, plants and they uh, have stamens something like this this is called yes this is called poly adelphi okay so back to the concepts uh, we write the floral formula of uh, this family, something like this, zygomorphic flower, that we write something like this, then comes uh, calyx, five, then comes corolla, uh, one plus two plus two, Remember that you are supposed to write that in this sequence only and then comes androsium in which you, should, you are expected to write 9 plus 1 here. So we are, we have covered this time the details of androsium. In the next lecture, we will talk about the details of inosium and till that time, see you. Thank you for listening to me so kindly. Have a nice time. 
stay safe and take care thank you